We are here with the convoy as it waits to cross the Moroccan-Algerian border. The governments have made a special exception in this case. Even previous efforts by the US government have failed to reconcile the two. As the drivers faced the dividing line between the two nations the next morning, it had become clear that they were going to go through. And history was made when for the first time in more than 15 years, the vehicles crossed the border to the cries of joy from the Algerian public. Despite the efforts of the Algerian police to restrain onlookers, they flooded past the security forces and there were tearful scenes as the convoy volunteers and Algerians were united in a common cause. Press TV journalist Yvonne Ridley was broadcasting live as it happened. Our humble little convoy managed to melt the hearts of the politicians. They put aside their political differences. They saw the bigger picture. They saw these are ordinary people going to the aid of the people in Gaza. It just goes to show that Palestine can be the passport to uh, unity, to the solving of these problems between Arab countries. The public was amazing. They just ran through the police, which I couldn't believe that they actually did. Chanting, screaming, waving flags. Some people were in tears. They obviously know what we're here for. Irrespective of how keen or otherwise the governments were about the British humanitarians, it was becoming clearly evident that the convoy had the blessing of ordinary people. But a new country also meant new problems. In a repeat of what happened in Morocco, plans for the Viva Palestina aid convoy to take part in rallies in Algerian cities were cancelled by the government when it learned that some events would include participation from opposition figures. There were uh, rallies planned in our minds in uh, Morocco and Algeria and uh, none of them really materialised. Um, but you know, I think it would be childish to make too much of that because both these countries allowed us to pass through their territory. They gave us petrol, they gave us food, they gave us hospitality and they sped us on our way. And after all, wasn't that the point? And so the convoy drivers used the opportunity to get some rest before Viva Palestina continued on its way across the vast Algerian landscape. Tunisia was a nightmare, it was oppressive, it was tyrannical. That was the authority. No. You want to make us sound clear, brother? We are Who are you supporting? No, no, the, Palestinian we are support. we are the passage through Tunisia was indeed plagued with problems. There were regular standoffs between convoy members and the police as the Tunisian security services tried to impose severe restrictions on movement apparently for the convoy's own safety. It's only now about 20 miles, right. or 15 okay. miles to the next mosque. Can you tell me this then? Yes. I can go back and tell the people. This is Why is Stockton is going there? Because the, the, the village is too small to, to hold it's you. It's a town. Even performing the Friday prayer became a challenge. They want us to go 15, 17 kilometers, which is half an hour of our driving to pray. This is going to be, you know, only after the Salah. It's only 200 meters, 200 meters. The local people here are saying to me, leave your vehicles there and come with us. We're going to support you. The convoy did eventually win this particular battle. The police didn't allow the volunteers into the local mosque, so instead they prayed on the side of the road, despite police demands that they move on. What it seems to be, and we've experienced this across Morocco and Algeria, and now in Tunisia as well, is that ordinary people are being inspired by the action that we are taking and, and the inaction that their own governments are taking over the Palestinian issue. It seems that we are inciting um, a, re a political response, a movement amongst ordinary people as we pass through. Um, and that is, seems to be why the governments are frightened of us and why they are policing us so heavily. As for the media, it certainly wasn't excluded from this special treatment. At one point, the press TV vehicle also found itself boxed in and prevented from moving by Tunisian police. We've been stuck in this spot here for the last 12 hours with the press TV vehicle and a truck from Ireland. 
As you can see, there's a police roadblock ahead and they won't allow us to move forwards an inch. There was also an incident where two female members of the convoy who had decided to separate from the rest of the vehicles and visit the Tunisian city of Sfax were allegedly kidnapped and manhandled by the police. She just phoned Yvonne, she's crying on the phone, she goes, we don't know where we're heading to. They've just been basically abused, manhandled, thrown into a police uh, a van. I got this frantic phone call from one of the female members of the convoy, Nora Bennett, who had, uh, well, there's a dispute over the wording. She says she was kidnapped. The Tunisian authorities subsequently said she'd been arrested. Uh, whatever happened, she was taken against her will. And uh, initially, they, uh, they were trying to rejoin her with the convoy. But in the end, uh, she and, and the others were pushed over to the Libyan side of the border. But there was some good news even in Tunisia. The three men who had remained under the detention of British anti-terror police had been freed without charge and were able to join the convoy after sailing into the country by ferry. So by the time we were a third of the way into our journey, we had reunited with us all members of the uh, convoy, including the, the, the six and the three, the nine or in, in, in total, who'd been arrested. But of course, that story did not make the same papers that had run the headlines of Galloway's terror convoy. And although the Tunisian government, more than ever, was trying to keep Viva Palestina away from its population centres and out of public view, it was impossible to drive through the country without entering at least some towns and villages. And when the convoy did, it was again clear that the government's behaviour was in sharp contrast to the sentiments of its people, who crowded the streets at every opportunity to cheer the humanitarian mission on despite the clear disapproval of the police. The Tunisian people pushed their way through this uh, government indifference, maybe worse than indifference. The people of Tunisia may have been, paradoxically, the most enthusiastic of all the people on the journey towards the convoy, which tells you something. And uh, I'm forever grateful. We, we are with you. In the next episode, these trucks, they just saw some. They're on a different level. Credit to the Libyans. Yeah. The Libyan government decides to get on board with Viva Palestina. We will have a very big convoy saying to the world that we are standing beside our people in Palestine. And the situation in Egypt reaches breaking point when the convoy is obstructed by police. Just a war over stolen land Why do you think little bears are throwing stones at tanks? And we'll never really know how many people are dead They drop bombs on little girls while they sleep in their bed It's your choice what you do with this message Don't get confused, I view this from a human perspective How many more resolutions have to be violated? How many more children have to be annihilated? Free, 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 free